Welcome to MHS TV. I'm Levi, and this is your news for Friday, September 10th, 2021. Last week, Indiana Governor Holcomb signed an executive order to change closed contact rules in schools. The order makes it easier for schools to contact trace. It says that if schools have strict mask policies, then there is no need to contact trace students and staff who have been wearing masks correctly. Next Friday, September 17th, is the end of the first grading period. It is hard to believe it has been that long already. Make sure you are checking your grades and assignments before the end of the grading period. Also take advantage of study hall and advisory times to get caught up. October 21st marks the first choir concert of the year. After not being able to perform last year, the show choir is ready to get back on the stage. It was 2019 when show choir first hit the stage at MHS and became a part of the fine arts program. Performing for the first time during the fall choir concert, a medley from the movie La La Land. It was really fun and I was super stoked about it. It was like so exciting with uh, the outfits especially. Being our first year, we did really great as a show choir. And even with the ups and downs of um, the year with like our coaches and with that sort of thing, we really like prevailed with that sort of thing and I think the performance just amazing. Though performing their 2019 run unaffected, they were not able to have a 2020 fall performance due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Like many, moving on to online during the 2020 fall school year. Now as things are slowly coming back, the show choir is ready to get back on the stage for their 2021 fall concert. Knowing that we have a performance at our fall concert has really helped kind of motivate myself and the performers in the group to know that we have something that we're working towards and to know that there is kind of a goal at the end of the semester for us. It's really exciting, especially after so many cancelings of events and performances, being able to be around a group of people that I love and performing with them is just really great. Show choir is a first semester only class, so last year we were only able to do show choir virtually, and this year we are in person, so that changes the level of music we can do and the amount of music that we are able to perform. We also have a choreographer this year for show choir named Pierre Cooks and he is here with us anytime we have white days on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we are able to do some more intricate dance numbers, having someone that is dedicated just to that portion of what we do. Come out and see the show choir on October 21st during the fall choir concert. Last Friday was the election for student council officers. The results are in and here are the winners. President is Kanan Jewett, Vice President Braxton Banks, Treasurer Zara McCullough, and Secretary Hope Ward. This year, there will also be four executive board members to help in decision making. They are Jose Crane, Kayla Theobald, Felix Harley, and Gianna Oda. It's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to ask for help. The One Campaign aims to show students this by promoting mental wellness and trying to defeat the stigma that surrounds mental illness. One connects students, staff, and community members through the education of mental illness. It doesn't matter who you are or where you've been before. Anyone can struggle. And if we reflect on that and think about the difference that just one person or one kind word could have made on that day, then we'll realize why it's so important to reach out to the other people in our lives. Sometimes you just need that one person to listen to you or you need that one person to tell you that they love you or just, you know, show that they care. One smile. Even with our mask, you can still see someone smiling at you. Every day, every time I see a smile, I think that is one bit of my day that is better. Or just like even talking to the person could make them feel better. Like, like actually to like let them know that they're not alone. Just one person being there willing to listen to someone's problems. So that can save a person's life, truly. I didn't want to talk about my feelings. And I, sometimes I still don't, it's just, you have to get them out. You can't keep them buried in your whole life because it just hurts you. If you are really struggling, you should seek help and you shouldn't be afraid to do that. Clubs and other after-school activities are underway. If you are part of an academic team, club, or any other school-related group, let us know when your meetings are and we will put it on the news. One new club this year is the Disc Golf Club. Make sure to join today. The facts department is often overlooked due to its tucked away location. 
Let's take a few moments to learn more about this MHS program and talk to Mrs. Nelson. I teach fashion and textiles, and then I teach advanced nutrition and wellness. This is my 12th year of teaching. This is my sixth year at Mishawaka. I love that they're electives and that the kids that want to be in the class elect to be here, you know, like, so we have a greater interest, you know, for the subject matter, kind of have that excitement. It's not, you know, just a run of the mill basic class. We never, it's definitely never a run of the mill because we're way off the beaten path, but um, we understand our subject matter, you know, and that's something that nobody else does. So we're kind of unique in that sense. But. I love teaching elect I, electives. I you know I wouldn't teach a core class. I mean, I appreciate having a ton of students, but I like having less students that, like I said, choose to be here. No forcing. It's like I love teaching people how to sew, and I love that people will come back year after year to take you know higher level classes and yeah, love it like I love it. The Mishawaka Network is looking for students who are interested in running cameras, announcing live sporting events, and learning how a live production works. If you are interested, reach out to Mr. Rendell or go to room 33 to get more information. That is all your school news for today. Now to our weekly sports update. The girls soccer team has had some mixed results over the last week. They started by beating Gentown 7-0 with six goals from Franny Parks. They then played twice over this weekend, losing to a very good Elkhart team 3-2. But then recovering to defeat Michigan City 8-3, the girls then took on Warsaw Tuesday night, losing 6-0. The boys' tennis team is growing and becoming stronger as they face many matches this month. It is up to the varsity players to lead the Cavemen to a good season. The boys' tennis team is constantly competing <laughs> in matches this fall. In the month of September, the team will have had 10 matches and even more for the varsity members. My goal is to get better and work on my form and just become a better athlete altogether. I just like the atmosphere and the, how the game's played and as well as the people on the team are pretty cool too. What I like most about tennis is probably the relationship that I have with my team and my opponents. Uh, my ultimate goal for the season is to lead my team into a lot of victories and to better myself in tennis. The team is developing and coming together and are looking to achieve plenty of victories throughout this season. The newer players are learning and have a lot of potential to make the tennis team great. Well, I haven't been playing for too long, but probably just getting better already. I've only been playing for like two weeks, so we'll see at the end of the season. My greatest achievement in tennis is probably winning semi-sectionals last year. Jacob Dixon is hoping to surpass that goal by the end of the season. There you go, Jacob. Good luck to the Mishawaka High School girls golf team tomorrow as they head to the NLC conference meet. After that meet, the girls team only has one more meet before sectionals. Sectionals will begin for the girls golf team next Friday, September 17th. On Tuesday, August 31st, the Cavemen cross-country team went to Oxbow County Park to compete in the NLC Round Robin Meet Number 1. The boys achieved fourth place with several missing runners and Ryan Hubegardner and Liam Bowski going seventh and eighth place. The girls placed fourth and were led by Jillian Whalebrook, who got tenth place overall. The Cavemen head back to Oxbow tomorrow to race in the Minutemen Classic. Good luck to the Cavemen cross-country team. The Mishawaka High School volleyball team started this week with another road game. This time they traveled to Goshen on Tuesday. They came out strong, defeating the Red Hawks in straight sets to get their first NLC win of the season. They play in the Slicer Invite tomorrow in the port. Last Friday, the Cavemen took on the Goshen Red Hawks. Chaz Hardy would score the first touchdown for the Cavemen. Before halftime, junior Chase Gooden and senior Milan Burris would both score for the Cavemen, making the score 22 to zero. Sophomore Brady Fisher would leave the Cavemen at quarterback in the second half with a final score of 36 to seven. This Friday's game is going to be the WNDU game of the week. 
Each week, WNDU lets local fans vote on a few games to be their game of the week. After a close vote, the Mishawaka game against Warsaw was chosen by the fans as the best game this Friday. Tonight, the Cavemen will take on Warsaw at Steel Stadium at 7. Prior to kickoff, Mishawaka will be honoring Mr. Greg Smith. He was a big part of the school and community. LOD shirts were sold last week, so make sure you wear your shirts in remembering him tonight. On Monday, September 6, the Marshall County Blueberry Festival located in Plymouth wrapped up their five-day run. Even though they couldn't do it last year due to the pandemic, this year, nonprofit organizations depend on funds from events like these. The festival had more than 200,000 visitors from Michigan City, Niles, and Fort Wayne. IU Bloomington received a 5% increase in students this year compared to last year. However, several other IU locations have seen a decrease in student enrollment. IUPUI sees a 5% enrollment drop, IUSB received a 10% drop, and IU New Albany has a 13% drop in enrollment compared to last year. The fifth annual Comic-Con visited Elkhart September 4th and 5th for this year's Hall of Heroes. This two-day event showcased a wide variety of comic and superhero related things. While cosplaying may not be your thing, the Hall of Hero is also a great place to pick up collectible items or this year's case, visit the Batmobile replica. Join next year's Elkhart Comic Con on March 5th and 6th. WNDU has been supporting local schools in a variety of ways over the years. One way is the Pack a Backpack program. Thanks to this program, local students have received backpacks full of school supplies. This year, WNDU donated 600 backpacks to the School City of Mishawaka Schools. Thank you for your support. Notre Dame will have its first home football game of this season tomorrow against Toledo. This will be the first home game with full stands since COVID. All tickets will be mobile and all concessions will be by credit or debit only. Also, the game will be live streamed exclusively on NBC's streaming service, Peacock. This Saturday marks 20 years since the tragic attack on September 11, 2001. The attacks took almost 3,000 lives and changed American history forever. We want to take a moment to remember those who died that day. That is your news for today. Have a great weekend, cavemen.